Okay. Hi, everyone. It is Sunday, October the 3rd, 2021, or if we take off the thousand years that are not supposed to be on our calendar, then this would be whatever October the 3rd means, 1021. And it leads into a little bit of what I want to discuss today, and that is if our world is a type of simulate simulation, and it's it's pretty clear that it is. I mean, I'm not saying it's exactly a simulation, but it's certainly an artificial construct. It's not a it's not the reality we've come to believe that it, and and be presented that it is. Obviously, and I don't think we're not going to discuss that here. What we're going to discuss is the interesting question of when did it start. As I'm moving more to the belief that this is um, almost like a type of computer programmed reality, it had a start date. There is a year, you might say, there is a time zero where that marker point, everything before that marker point is just computer programmed information of history, where it's computer programmed just like in a video game where there is a specific amount of information that takes you up to the moment you begin the game and then there is the the activity of the game itself which you can classify which you might classify as real time so our question to ask then is assuming for the sake of this argument that this is a type of simulation when did it start and as I thought about when did it start, I've come I've come to three specific possible I think dates. Certainly, it's, this is not old. You know, this idea that this has been here for whatever ten billion, two billion, x billion, hundreds of millions of years. That that's complete. That's completely false. It's much more recent. And I I'm going to give three specific dates. One would be the actual year that we think of as zero which has the very strange ADBC time frame in front of it. Um, it's, it's, it's the, it is the strangest, it's the strangest dating system you can possibly imagine where instead of, where you have this arbitrary point that time moves forward and backward from, which makes no sense of how any, any calendar, any, any real timekeeping device would work. So that's one. Another is is the the time frame of the 1600s, and I think some have used the the, 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 the year 1655. Uh, others might even go into the, might even go into the early 1600s. Um, <clears throat> that's another possibility. Another possibility would be the time frame of the 1800s, somewhere in the 1800s, whether it's mid to late 1800s around the time of the Civil War, whether it's earlier during the supposed Napoleonic War of 1812-type period. But I'm going to try to, to, to dig us into how might we be able to tell the difference between what's a year that has been run in the simulation. So something that those of us have who have populated this realm have experienced. And what is a year that is before that when it's something that's simply just coded information into the into the construct. So let's start with and of course because of my World's Fair research, the 1800 seem very, very plausible, as if everything before the year 1820 or 1850 or 1860 or 70 is, is not real from the standpoint of this simulation. Okay, but let's start with the, with the uh, year zero concept, this idea that the birth of Christ is year zero. <clears throat> and we already have the issue that we don't know if this is a real figure. We don't know if this was a real figure, what year this figure was really born into. We just have this arbitrary year zero. 
And then we start with the AD BC dating system. And if we, if Fomenko is right and the 1,000 years have been added to our calendar in order to really fool us, then actual year zero would be what we know as the year 1,000 under this, under this theory. So we've got a thousand years then of real history, of which the time frame we think of as zero to one thousand is squeezed in together. Two thousand years become one thousand years. But if you were if you were a computer construct, then of course, the first year of 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 anything of the game would be year one. So it would make sense that you would you would be starting on zero time time frame, and BC, which is supposed to mean before Christ, right? Supposed to mean before Christ. Well, what could that what could that mean instead? Um, before civilization, uh, civilization may be meaning the thing we experience in this reality, not civilization as we think. The word means that that's, that could be a really sneaky presentation. AD, which is supposed to be Latin translated right into the year of our Lord, year of our Lord. Well, if the Lord is really the construct, if the system itself or that which the programmer which created the code, right, which to, to the Gnostics would be the chief archon then that would be the Lord that's being referred to as the, the builder of the matrix. So year zero is a possibility. 1665 shows up because um, a lot of researchers have, have sort of noticed that the 1600s has a real flavor of change, tumult, um, um, Things kind of get turned on their heads in a lot of places in the 1600s, and our Renle Chateau story kind of comes, you can either say it begins in very ancient Gallic times, it can begin with the Cathars and the Knights Templar, or it begins in the 1640s or in the 1600s with these strange um, churches that are being built, like Sulpice and Chartres, and these organizations that are founding around them through Olier, through the strange painting works of the time of Poussin and some others. That is, it's like the mystery or, or something is being presented for the first time. And perhaps if you follow that logic, then the 1600s might be the first, not only the first simulation, but the first realization early on that the beings are living in a simulation. Like, I would think whatever... Whatever the starting point of the simulation would be, the first creatures that are in it, the first, like, if it's, you might say, if it's a video game, the video game is constantly being updated. So the game today is, you might say, cleaner, smoother than the perception of the game would have been when it first, when the simulation was first turned on. I, I don't, I don't get the sense the simulation was complete, flicked on, and has been kind of hands off just completely, the creators of it, completely in observation mode. I think that the, the whoever or whatever designed the simulation has been tinkering with it, has been altering it, has been fixing it, has been upgrading it. So my guess would be at the beginning of the simulation, the first 50 years, first 100 years, would be the most likely time to have if you're looking for it, to have seen that you're you're not living in the reality you're being presented, that you are definitely living in a very different reality, and that that it is a simulation, and exactly what the simulation is might have been easier to spot. So I think another another way of tracking when the simulation began is to really track artwork, um, painting, statues, um, literary works. Uh, plays um, to really get a sense of is there is there one period of time where it really looks like 
the presentation of reality is really getting presented, is getting presented um, in an extremely deep way. And uh, certainly the period from the Renaissance all the way through the 1600s fits that bill, definitely fits the bill of a lot <clears throat> at least being is being presented and seen through. Okay. Then, of course, we have the 1800s. Now, the 1800s, we have the early 1800s, which is so odd because we have the, right, the period of two sort of conjoining events. We have the, the basically, the world is at war, supposedly. The Napoleonic Wars are going on in Europe, which spill over to North America to the War of 1812, right? The only war, one of the only wars where you have no winner. Uh, it makes no sense just even why there was a war. But there's just supposedly this worldwide war. Um, I was just talking about this today with someone, how the Battle of Waterloo, for example, you can't prove that the Battle of Waterloo happened at all. The, the, the supposed 1815 destruction of Napoleon, um, where, I don't know, 50 or 60,000 French soldiers are supposed to be dead. When you go to the battlefield, you get the number of bodies you find are zero. None. You've got no bodies, no graves, no nothing. The usual answer is, by our crack historical team, is either A, oh, the French took all of their bodies away and they buried them in France, of which nobody knows where they, you can't find those bodies either, but oh, they, were, they were taken away, convenient. Or the second one, oh, they buried them in one large mass grave and we just haven't found it yet. Now, <laughs> these soldiers would have been buried with a tremendous amount of metal whether it be belt buckles, whether it be all of the buttons on the shirts, or the shirt collars were metal, the certain weapons and knives and guns would have all probably been gone into such a mass grave. Any decent metal detector would have found this a long time ago. If you figure there's 200,000 metal instruments in a mass grave somewhere, <clears throat> somewhere on the Waterloo Plains, enough people have walked around with metal detectors guaranteed that you would have found that. He would have found that a long time ago. So is that is that even real or is that because another thing I think there's two things you'd want to, there's one thing you'd want to do if you were beginning a simulation I think if you were beginning an experiment you're begin you have to begin the the simulation with something you're beginning it with an event you're not just like day one of a simulation if I if I'm say I'm recreating. The, the supposed history of planet Earth. Let's say I'm going to I'm going to recreate some of the simulation. Well, I'm not going to start the simulation on September the 14th, 1977. Why would I start? Nothing's happening. Like there's 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 literally there's there's no specific uh, interesting event anywhere going on that I can point to and say, okay, that's this is a good. And you'd want to have something quite global, I think, so that you have something that when the when the the switch is put on, something's actually happening. The the first characters that turn out in the simulation are engaged in something, not just eating a cheese sandwich and and walking in the forest and having another day where nothing's going on. Okay, so you want to have something going on. So I think you also have to have some kind of event, and it doesn't have to be a war. I mean, it can be anything. It can be any kind of event. Maybe the you start with the the... Uh, the meteor that hits Siberia, or maybe you start with the, the what the tungsten. Uh, no, it starts with the T. Or maybe you have <clears throat> you would have the um, Indonesian volcano that blows, or maybe you'd start with Mount Vesuvius supposedly going or something. I mean, you you would have at least some event that you're going to say, I'm going to start the simulation. My I'm going to start my simulation of Earth reality here. So from that perspective, uh, the U.S. Civil War could have been a really good marker point that maybe there really was a civil war in another reality, similar to how we maybe similar to how we've actually been told it really was, but we started this one with something completely different, or the simulation started, yeah, somewhere in the 1800s with some event, maybe the, an event that we've we've has been erased from our history. But to me, this would be a key element to how to find when the simulation started. That is, there should be a great number of people with a tremendous 
um, level of awakeness, a tremendous level of questioning reality, a tremendous level of seeing through seeing through things, and it should show up in the, in the art and literature. We should have an event that the simulation would have started. And if you if we go to the 1800s, one thing about the 1800s, Ben, all, one of the things I haven't talked about about this period, beyond all of the the stuff about the world's world's fairs and the destruction of the native populations of of the world and um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you have is some really unique. Yeah, there is some unique painting, right? I went through people like Arnold Bachlin and and the, the symbolist period, uh, which which might be not trying to revive an old past, like I said, or not trying to show the destruction of this Greek Roman recent history. Maybe they're trying to just show that that history is fake. That history is is actually doesn't exist. It, 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 it's a, it's a, maybe they, they they realize simulation because that late that mid to late eighteen hundreds you're dealing with some particularly United States extremely powerful authors. We're talking about Walt Whitman, Henry Thoreau, uh, who wrote Moby Dick. It's off now at the top of my head. Um, how can I not remember? Herman Melville, Moby Dick. You're talking about some, some unbelievable pieces of literary work, poets like Robert Frost. Um, you're, seeing, um, you're, you're seeing also the rise of very unique plays. You're seeing the rise of very unique sports. Sports, are, North American sports are all developing right within a 10 or 20 year period of themselves and, and seemingly they're trying to show that there's been a, a long um, a long evolution of how the sport developed. But really, when you look at it, it's kind of like these sports just kind of magically appeared one day. It's like one day they weren't there and the next day everybody's playing it. Uh, almost like, again, it was just it's just programmed into the whole into the whole thing. And you're trying you're trying now, <clears throat> if you're trying to present that there is a real history, that there's been a real there's been a real story, you're having to manufacture excuses as to how things that just literally showed up magically uh, almost didn't show up magically. Uh, when you went back into ancient Egypt, so here's a, another someone could say, well, maybe it's in the, in the time frame of, of uh, Old Kingdom Egypt, because Old Kingdom Egypt has another of these magic stories, right? There's the standard, it's all savages and cavemen and uh, the usual idiots. And then one day, all of a sudden, the pharaonic Egypt magically appears, complete with its writing system, complete, complete with its knowledge, complete with its uh, ability to work uh, large stones and granite, to move stones, to create structures to have a complete religious system just magically overnight just, and and archaeologists will tell you that it, even our even the even the archaeological group will tell you they really don't know where it came from they've tried to present explanations and try to show it's it, it's been uh, evolved from this and evolved from that but they still will admit it's just like it's like magic it's just there's nothing and then all of a sudden it's pharaonic Egypt and they can't there, there's no logical explanation for how that happened so it's got to be one of these, you know, the, the time frame, the big time frame of the 1800s, at the in the 1800s for historians was 4004 BC, right? That was the number that this Bishop Usher guy had been, had created, claiming to have taken the Old Testament and have rifled through the, the, um, the births and years and lives of the prophets to determine the creation according to Genesis, which he put at 4004 BC, and I think he actually has time, like 7 p.m. or something, but on a particular date. But 4004 BC, you also then have to wonder, like, okay, maybe that's the start date. <laughs> maybe, they, again, somebody was, somebody was sneaking in knowledge, answers to us without looking like on the surface, they were giving us an answer, but I'm pretty sure if we could, on um, if we could crack through the covering of the simulation, if we could get into the into the mainframe, if we could get into the into the code, if we could get into the 
the story of the original programming. I'm pretty sure there's a, this thing starts at that before a particular start time, nothing has happened here. All there is is the memory of whatever this simulation is or was modeled on is modeled into the into what we know as our our history, our very our much older history, and history as we know it starts on a particular moment, a particular second, a particular day. Boom! There it is. It starts. The, the simulation is running. So these are the things I think we'd have to dig through, and that would be one you want to start with an event of something. And probably something global, where, where, where you've actually got all of a sudden something happening. That would be one. Two, you, you would be seeing, as again, I would say so much of reality would be able to be seen through as false because it's probably, there's so many glitches in the matrix, you might say. There's going to be so many, so many errors in reality that <clears throat> any, any of the creatures who are paying attention to it, it, it just will not match the programming we've been given. Reality acts like this, but reality just did the complete opposite of it. So my programming, what I've been told about the world, which of course is just a program, because if you were, if the, if the date, let's say the date was, I don't know, February 5th, 19, February 5th, 1862. So that means if you were 27 years old on that date, then everything about your life before that moment is quite simply just a script, just a computer program, just a, a constructing of a backstory to give your character the belief that it's lived the 27 years. And of course, if you ask that character, they would, yes, I was born here and these are my parents and I did this. And I remember when I was eight years old, I did that, but it was just, it, it's, just, it's like a, the robots in Westworld, right? They have a backstory. Here we go, getting into into Westworld. So just like Westworld, Westworld would have they would they would have had a start date. There would have been a start time where there was nothing happening on Westworld, but all of the robots have a backstory. They have a belief of a number of things that have happened in their past that makes them think they have been a uh, an actual character since year zero, since, or since their birth. When, all the, when only they've been living since whatever year zero was, when, they, when Westworld was flicked on, only those experiences have actually, from the standpoint of Westworld, happened, from the standpoint of reality happened. The rest is just a construct. So, so you wouldn't be able to go back to, if you could find day one, you wouldn't be able to go back and just say, well, tell me what happened when you were eight. The, 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 the characters would have... The people would have memories of when they were eight years old, and they would think they were, they would think they're as real as our our beliefs of what happened to us when we were eight years old. We believe that's a real story. And so <clears throat> maybe the simulation started 20 years ago, you know, 30 years. Maybe the simulation started in 1990. And how would, how would you know? How would you know? I mean, I'm, I'm pushing it back further before our lives, but that's, we shouldn't necessarily we shouldn't necessarily check that off as a guarantee either. I mean, because just like I just said, from the from the standpoint of the robots in Westworld, their backstory makes them believe that there's been events and things happening in their lives before the day they were switched on. So if this reality switched on in 1985, then everything that happened to me in 1984, which I think is a real event, I think really happened to me, didn't, of course. It happened to nobody, it was just a construct of the computer program and didn't actually occur. But I'm guessing that like more likely the simulation started before we were here, that, that the simulation the simulation has been running for at least 100 years, if not at least 150 to 200 minimum. So these are things I'd be looking for, an, an event that indicates Something's going on that we want to um, we want to experiment with immediately because you wouldn't if you were if again if I made a simulation as an experiment if I'm say I'm say I created it doesn't matter what it is let's say uh, the scientists who make the the uh, maze for the mouse right and they want to see if the mouse will make make it through the maze well they they don't just put the mouse on a piece of to start with put the mouse on a piece of wood and just 
do nothing for two or three years and just watch the mouse on a piece of wood. The, the experiment starts when they have the maze created, and then they put the mouse in the maze, and the first thing the mouse has done is being recorded. They have, you, you, you've got something that you're actually testing. So I don't think you would start a simulation like this one. This, as complex as this is, you wouldn't start it, like I say, with everybody just going to eat a cheese sandwich. Something has got to be going on that right away you are already consuming a tremendous amount of data from the experiences that are going on. So we have to have something happening. We have to have, again, glitch, so many glitches in the matrix or so many holes in reality that a lot of uh, very wise and, and uh, people are, are seeing through it. And if they have an artistic bent in some way, they're trying to, they're probably going, many of them are going to try to place this knowledge into their artistic endeavors. So if we take it to those extremes, uh, I don't think we necessarily, I don't think, you know, the 19th, the, 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 the time frame where you could have had a simulation starting in modern times would have been the 1960s. You would have, you would have started the simulation with the things that were going on from the standpoint of the Kennedy assassination and Vietnam and, and this moonwalk and all of that kind of big, big events. Um, and then you would have had, and then you had this strange pushback from so many of the population of seeing through reality, right? The, the, whether, whether you're saying the entire hippie situation and, and Laurel Canyon and things are completely government controlled, or if some of it is just actually the, uh, the experiences of the population at the time are breaking through. This is the time of writing, like, uh, you know, you've got all the writers of Castaneda and, and a whole lot of what you might call a new age movement manufacturing in the, in the 60s, whether that's positive or negative is up for discussion. But that would be the, I think that'd be the only time from the standpoint of the modern world where you have not just the event, like you can't say it's like World War One. Well, if you look at shortly after World War One, I'm not seeing this uprise of, of tremendous, I don't want to call it awakening, but tremendous seeing through, seeing through the, the, seeing that the world is a simulation and presenting it in a, in an artistic way, which I think would probably happen. So from that perspective, from that perspective, it's pushing back much further. The 1800s become a really interesting possibility because, because the world's fairs can be, can be dropped in, you might say, into the simulation to be the, as I've mentioned before, as to be the um, the indoctrination tool into what we want everyone to believe going forward. Or maybe the simulation started in the 1820s, the 18, 1805 or, or something. Um, the, other, the other of that piece, sorry, I've talked to, I'm kind of spinning through a few different things. I appreciate that. I'm, it's all in my hand here. Uh, when I talked about the Napoleonic Wars, I was also... Of course, that time frame is also known for what's known as Tecumseh's Comet and these very strange comet sightings, which, which do, if you read into some of these comets and, and the events that happen to towns and cities and people because of these weird comets in the sky where like for days or weeks the sun goes away or weird things happen with, with you know, it's raining like chickens or, or frogs or... or uh, you know, the, the colors of things change or, you know, there's a lot of really weird things that are being written about in that, in that time frame. I'd have to dig through some of where I found them again, the, the specifics of this time, time period, um, particularly related to some of these comets. But that, these are really good examples. If you read through some of the stuff of glitches in the matrix, that things are not, things are not working right. And, it's possible now that I think back that the world's fairs could have been, yeah, like a reset is a really good way of saying it. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, the, 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 the program or the, 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 the simulation had been, had been really getting choppy for a while. It, it, it just wasn't running well. And so you had to kind of put in a new, a new update, a new windows update into the system to clean up the old, uh, clean up a huge number of, of the up patch, right? You have to put in a, these massive patches, and it's possible one of the one of the best ways to 
present the patch into the perception in the minds of the people is through these world's fairs. So the 1800s does give us this possibility of events, some very, very strange events going on. We have this, this almost like a, like a real totalitarian control starting to happen worldwide in, in unique forms. We have all of our current systems, whether they be governmental or law or commerce or or military or uh, the origins of police forces and fire departments and the medical system. It, it all kind of starts to come in the late 1800s. They're all being they're all being they're all being generated at the same time frame. Which it could be indicating that the simulation is active, it's running, it's 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 evolving, as you might say, it's going its own way, it's it's doing what it's going to do. Patches have to keep being installed because too much of it is being is being exposed, and that's where you get so many of the writings of people like Whitman and Thoreau and Frost and Hermie Melville and the other great writers of that period. Um, I'm not sure when Goethe was writing. Um, Wolfgang Goethe was he writing in the early 1800s? People, you'll somebody in the comments will tell me. They'll look it up on Wikipedia. Tell me. But you've got this time frame of also these these quite unique thinkers all of a sudden where uh, while you've always had supposedly these thinkers through history, they, there's these blocks of time. There's these blocks of time where all of a sudden art and literature and knowledge seems to just, just rise up all together. And then it kind of just it goes down and then a whole new rising up. And we see this. We do see that in the 1800s as well, this rising up of tremendous um, knowledge. Um, even people, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Mark Twain, um, and they're all, Mark Twain has a lot of writings about that the world's a dream, right? That the world is not real, that the world is fake. Um, um, so a lot of these writers have similar, have similar presentations that they are digging into the nature of reality. They're, they're, there's much of a philosopher as any that was any that were in Greece, you know, whether it be Plato or Socrates or whatever else, the 1800s are, have this rise of, particularly in North America, of this philosophical, this philosophical explosion. So that may all be linked to the system is is breaking. The system is the system is not stable. So it's being seen through more. Um, if we turn this into Westworld, so if we take this. I'll try to keep it, I'll keep this under 40 minutes so we keep it in some kind of you know time time frame action. But if we take it to Westworld, if you were actually able to go to Westworld from the standpoint of examining and, and, and having interviews with the robots, could you be able with their help, with their supposed memories, without knowing when the start date really was, could you be able to from the interviews determine the year Westworld actually flicked on and started its experience? I don't know. Because certainly, in this case, the robots aren't dying. Uh, the robots, as opposed to the robots of our world who live 50 or 100 or 80 years or 20 years and we die, uh, the robots in Westworld don't die. They just die and get redone, just get put back into service. So if you could track through all of their all of their lives, births, and deaths, you would be able to have the day when, or the moment that they can't remember any lives or births or deaths before that. Well, that must be when the simulation first ran through. Um, so it makes you. It also makes you wonder. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. This this conversation is taking me tangents here. So. We have the idea of historical doppelgangers, and and we've seen so many of these pictures. I'm sure you see like a picture of Johnny Depp, and then you see whatever some Civil War soldier looks like Johnny Depp, or you see somebody else as here's this person today, a famous person, and wow, in like 1927, it's the same guy, it's the same girl, that it's them. Like it's not just like they look like. I mean, it's them. It's like that's who it is. It's the same person. Um, Whatever. This, I mean, I think some of the I've seen the, the John Travolta one. The yeah, the, I don't know. There's been like fifty or hundred of these historical doppelgangers, right? 
So if it's Westworld, if if the whole concept of reincarnation is is crap, which it quite well highly might be, you know, this the whole concept. But what what's really going on is you are living and dying as a form. Uh, the form dies as the form part of you dies. Consciousness holds on. If consciousness doesn't can't be released, can't get out of Plato's cave. If consciousness is still in the cave, the consciousness is going to get put back into a brand new into a into the same body. You're not you're not getting a new body. You're going to get the same one. You're going to get, but maybe you won't have. As I kind of talked about, like Groundhog Day, you just keep coming back and you you live the same exact life over and over and over again. In this case, you get the same body, but you're living, you know, you live from 1920 to 1936. You die early at 16. You, you're you reborn in the same body in 1937, but now in a different part of the world or whatever. Now you live 80 years into, you know, and then you die again. And then, So it's possible that what we're seeing is we're seeing the same, that conscious, the, the, in the, end of the individual consciousness that has come into this reality keeps, keeps uh, being replaced or, or re-indoctrinated with the same with the same body so in that case that would mean my particular form has gone through you know however many generations of experience over time in the simulation because that's another if it's a simulation if we're living a simulation it's limited now, you might have massive amounts of possibilities, but it's still, no matter what the simulation is, every simulation has limits. The characters can only do so many things. If you program, if there's a conversation between two characters in a video game, well, they might have 40 different things they can say, but that's it. They got 40. So maybe you program in instead 4,000 or 400,000. There's still limits. And what you're going to see in any simulation is a lot of repetition. Things will be repeated over and over again. So, of course, why wouldn't the bodies be just used over and over again? Why would you create new, completely new bodies? That would make that would just be a waste of, of um, waste of computing power. You just you've already got one in the system. You've got one body type and shape and structure. Just you just one goes and you what do they call it in in uh, regeneration? You're just in a sports game, right? One some of these ones were. One character, one athlete in the game retires, and then they just regenerate the exact same character with a new name. And so the game is always populated by the same level of talent. Is every time one player leaves and retires, a new one comes in. It's just the same player with a new name. Why wouldn't you do something like that? That would be the that would be the logical way of running your simulation. You wouldn't want to have you wouldn't want to have it so. So open. So that's another another way of determining when does a simulation happen. Start is is by watching the repetition, historical repetition. The more historical repetition we have over and over and over again means that the simulation has less ideas or less possibilities. So you take that into say the city fires of the 1800s. Well, that would make sense if there weren't many. If if you needed to create damage to a city, well. You don't have many options yet programmed in the game, so fire. That's the only thing we got. So, yeah, we need to do something to Baltimore. What do we got? We got three options. The fire, the something else, and something else. Well, fire. Well, fire. And now over time, the programmers have finally started, well, we need other stuff. You know, we have to we have to simulate some other things. We have to give ourselves some other other tools. So perhaps as time has gone on, the the, the possibilities have expanded. But if we're at the point we're seeing a ton of repetition, and in fact, the most repetition possible has to be the earliest part of the simulation because before the simulation started, you would probably be assuming tremendous diversity and tremendous change in possibility. The simulation starts a sense of a sense of very finite choices, which perhaps, depending if it's if it's watched and programmed, can build and build and build. So you have more and more and more and more possibilities as more and more time and energy and things are put into the simulation itself. More upgrades. So we don't have any answers for you. I don't I can't I can't tell you if we are in a simulation when it started, but I think we've I think we I think I've presented enough clues that it's possible if we if, if what I've presented is uh, logical for trying to explain when a simulation may have been turned on. 
now perhaps we can start rifling through what we have been presented about our historical past and find what is the exact moment when all of these different concepts and ideas come together into one place and say, well, it must be here. Here must be where the simulation began. And of course, simulations have an end. I haven't talked about this yet, but eventually simulations stop. If it's an experiment, the experiment is over and there's no need to continue the simulation. If it's some sort of video game, the person playing the game is done or bored or completed or tired and they just stop and they go on and they end that game and they start a new one. But that game, that particular game that they just played, which is re would be reality, you might say for the characters in the game, just one day ends. And unless the person goes back in their computer, hasn't erased it from their computer system and clicks on it again and restarts it, the game will just sit in suspended limbo. It will just, everything will just be still, will be unmoving. So we, if it's a simulation, there's also highly likely there's an end point, but there's no guarantee in being able to predict in all these scenarios, when the end point would be, right? If it's if it's not to do with a specific piece of information or a specific task has been completed or a specific something has been done, if it's just the person in charge of the game is bored and doesn't want to play anymore, it just ends abruptly with no reason whatsoever. Um, yeah, so let's leave that there. Just things to consider today, things to think about, ponder. It does relate to our reality today. I don't. I still want to do videos that aren't relating to what we're going through because what we're going through is is so you know is so contrived, is so obviously being placed in the system. You might say from outside the system, it's being. It's being programmed into the system, because, into the into the experience, because it's so it's so insane to the to what would be a natural progression of everything. It's obviously it's obviously a contrived part of the simulation. Um, so it's helping us if we understand when the simulation started. If we could ever find out the simulation start date, then we could dig through what was happening right before it, what was happening right after it. Because the stuff before it is from the what the simulation is based on. What's happening afterward has to be the initial reasons for creating the simulation in the first place. What's what's the point of having this thing? There must be something that the creators are trying to get, see, watch, experience, uh, understand. And so those first in our in our realm, those first ten or fifteen, twenty years, if we could know what those first 10 or 15 or 20 years are and can get a fair and can get some kind of accurate historical record, we might have a pretty good idea of what the simulation is meant to do. So we get a better understanding of what the hell is going on here. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for being around and uh, being a part of sometimes things like this that are a bit hard to explain. We'll see you soon with the next video, which I guess will be the next version of the Carlos Castaneda Tales of Power. Cheers.